All right, let's see how quick I can go through this. Um, this is a 95 Celica GT. And I pulled the stock 2.2 liter. I pulled the stock 2.2 liter engine out of it. And I got an engine that had been parted out. It was, um, I got it for really cheap. Um, it's from a uh, JDM. Um, MR2s, late 90s MR2s. That's what the engine's from. The engine's also in a uh, the GT4 in Japan. It's a turbo third generation 3S GTE. Um, I was able to use a lot of my parts from the 2.2 liter that was in this because the blocks are both um, S family blocks. It's just one's built for economy, the 2.2, and then one's built for performance, the turbo 2.0. So I opened up the block, um, the 96 block opened up the block, uh, had my crank lightened, I had the uh, J, uh, JN pistons, eagle rods put in, the pistons have a 20 overbore, but to go through the parts that are on it, um, stock fuel rail, stock 3SGTE injectors, I had to get all these parts from different people because like I said the engine had been parted out, but I, I got the intake manifold, got the throttle body, I just got my throttle body inlet flange in the mail, and this was the hardest thing to find alternator bracket. Um, reason being is the MR2 alternator bracket the engine came out of um, is actually mounted where the power steering pump is mounted on this engine. Um, so the 2.2 the liter in the Celica and the 2.0 turbo third generation 3S GTE both have this type of alternator bracket but it mounts into the head. 2.2 liter has a different head so you can't use the alternator bracket so I had to actually get one from the GT4 which is impossible to find almost. It's got to be the 94 to 99 GT4s that only went to the right-hand drive countries. Um, none of them came to the US unless you shipped it over. Um, I used the alternator from a Camry which actually has the... Uh, this is on top. The hot... Um, the positive output is on top which means it bumps this guy right there. The padding in the hood. Eventually that would wear through if I were to run it like this. So I've got to get another alternator. My Celica one would work because it just bolts into the um, to the alternator bracket perfectly. It would work, but it sounds like little mice chirping when I spin it. So I can't use that one. Um, the reason I have all these wires strewn out like this is that I could open the stock harness because um, I'm running an Autronic SM4. I had to separate um, it's an Autronic SM4, uh, which is an engine management system. I, it comes with its own wire harness, so I had to cut open. Oh, this is the Autronic wire harness. I've labeled all the stuff. Injector wires and ignition wires are over there. Because um, I'm not running a distributor setup, I'm going distributorless. Uh, and there's my distributor, half of it. Uh, I need to put the cover on. But I'm just using the number one timing signal that comes off of it to trigger the, uh, to tell the computer, or the engine, the, the Autronic, what the, the timing signal is of this thing, or, you know, where the engine's at in its rotation. All these wires are from the old wire harness. I'm going to end up cutting off most of these and, you know, probably only leaving about 10 of them just for future use. You know, if I have to run something else into the engine bay and I don't want to, you know, run my own wires, I can just use ones that are already ran. And these I'll just leave rolled up. These are eight injector wires um, for, you know, if you had a V8 engine and you're, you were plugging that into the Autronic. But I'm only using four, so I'm only going to, you know, I'll, I'll roll up the other four and save them instead of cutting them off. And then injector wires over there, extra sensor wires and other stuff for distributor and other pickups. And uh, I, I still have to wire in the signal, um, the signal from the transmission, the, the speed sensor. I've got the um, throttle position sensor wired in. I've got the uh, idle air control valve. Or uh, I've got that wired in. And where is the this wire? It went there. Oh, there it is. This has to go to the ignition switch. So it's got to come off the ignition switch. And I'm going to leave that back over there where I had it. Um, all these other wires I'm going to cut off. So, 
and I'm gonna make sure I save the ones that are going like to trigger the compressor to come on. Still have to wire in the O2 sensor. Um, this is a wideband O2 sensor. It's a, I got it with the AEM lambda, lambda uh, gauge uh, so that I can see my air fuel ratio. Um, coolant temperature sensor, I've got to wire this in. Um, and there's another coolant temperature sensor on the bottom of this radiator, which actually I've got to change. Um, I can't leave this guy in. Reason being is I tried to mount my turbo today. <sighs> radiator hose bumps it. But that's not the reason I can't mount my turbo. I can't mount my turbo because the manifold takes 12 millimeter studs. Um, I threaded in my 12 millimeter studs that I had to order. Got on eBay for like 12 bucks, free shipping. Not bad. All four of them. You know, they came with, with the lock nuts and everything. But the 12 millimeter studs will not go through the turbo, um, through the holes in the in the turbo flange uh, with the flange on the turbo. So that means. I've got to find studs that are 12 millimeter on one side and 10 millimeter on the other side. So it's gonna wait. It's gonna be a little bit longer before I get this thing uh, get this thing connected. Right now, I kind of don't like this. I can't put my thermostat and mount all that stuff yet because of this. Um. This is thermostat housing. And I have almost no room to put a hose on. So this is the stock 5SFE compressor. Which means I'm gonna have to take the compressor out. I'm gonna have to get a compressor from GT4 or just maybe run it without a compressor if I could find the compressor bypass, the little pulley on a pulley on a bracket thing. So I don't like this. And there's I have no other option. So, right now, it's going to go on. This was impossible to find. Uh, it's not even tight. You didn't see that. i got to tighten that. Um, that's my oil. My oil cooler. Uh, everything else is pretty good. I mean, i got my, my throttle body flange. The only parts I need. There. It's down the bottom. Right there, you can see where my finger is pointing. Um, I need the little, um, the, the part's like maybe one inch square, I guess, and it, it just bolts right onto that. Uh, it's for the oil feed for the turbo. So it shoots the oil into the turbo, and I need the oil, uh, the, the pipe that that, uh, that rubber hose connects to, and then goes up behind the engine and then into the turbo. But I can't mount the turbo yet, which means I can't mount the downpipe, and I can't, uh, I can't mount any of that stuff. So I can't work on the exhaust because I still have to make the exhaust. I've got a high flow, um, three inch catalytic converter on a two and a half inch system. Um, everything else is two and a half inches all the way back to the exhaust, uh, except for the catalytic converter, which is three inches. Um, and on top of that, it's a MagnaFlow high flow cat. So. High flow catalytic is like ultra high flow catalytic because it's a three inch inlet, three inch outlet, and I've got little flanges I'm gonna have to have welded. Um, what else can I show you guys? Because I'm kind of stuck right now, I can't work on it, and I'm over here at my friend's house, so I figure I'll make a video. Um, that's pretty much everything, really. I gotta, you know, Autronic has its own internal air pressure sensor map um, for the pressure on the intake manifold. This is the stock Celica one. But, uh, it's only I think it only rates at like 1.2 bars or something like that. It's, it's really low. Um, but I, I mean, uh, you know, the Autronic has its own built-in one anyway. I just, all I have to do is run a vacuum line from here under the interior where the Autronic is going to be mounted. But that's it. That's all I really have to show you guys.